Hi, I'm Paul Spangenberg. Me and my family run Nightsire Handmade. It's a small family-run business where we do woodworking and some art and many things like this. But in this particular instance, I'm here to pass my knowledge of woodworking on to you. I would use relatively simple techniques that anybody can master. We don't get anything real fancy, but we come out with some very nice products. And we're here to show you how to do it. All right, today what we're doing is we're making a phone holder. This one is complete with a space for the pop socket if you have one of those. And a um, it sits high enough for the charging cord to not crimp when you're charging your phone. We're going to start here with half inch by six uh, piece of oak. I'm using oak just because I like the heft of it for your phone. Now, if you're familiar with lumber, you know that half by six is... For some reason actually a half an inch thick but only five and a half inches wide it's how lumber works it's a long story it just is what it is okay so this is a half by six like i said just nice red oak and use whatever you like you could make this out of thicker lumber it would just look a bit bulky so i i, I prefer the half inch lumber so anyway we're going to do we only need a 12 inch piece of this so first thing we're going to do is come up here and cut 12 inches off of this. We're going to move over to the table saw and we're going to rip it three and a half inches wide. So we're going to use the three and a half inch piece for the phone holder itself and the piece you have left over is going to make the supports. All right, so now we've got our piece that's three and a half inches wide, and we're gonna cut a piece that is seven inches long. We're gonna cut another piece that is four and a half inches long. So seeing as how I had squared off both sides, I'm just gonna measure one from one side, one from the other. Makes it really fast. You just come through, make two cuts, and we're good to go. Just a quick thing about cross-cut saws here. The more teeth you have to your blade, the finer the cut. If for some reason you find yourself with a uh, lower to tooth count on your blade, which happens, this one here I think only has, I think it's uh, 30 some count. It's You just move a little slower and you still get a nice fine cut. Just make sure that uh, whatever blade you do use that you're cutting thoroughly and all the way through and keep your fingers out of the way of course. Alright, we've got our two pieces here and we're ready to keep rolling. We're going to set our miter saw at 22 and a half degrees. Now I chose 22 and a half degrees because I, it's a preset on my saw and you know, it gives it the right angle. But if you want to do 15 or you want to, you know, you want to stand a little more upright or you want to lay it down, you can change those angles. It's not that hard to change the angles. So I just stood that piece up and just right there on that angle. You can also do that angle on the table saw if you like. All right, so now we've got the leftover piece that, uh, that we cut off that 12 inch. We're gonna go ahead and set the saw at that 22 and a half degrees, which by the way is half of 45, so it just makes a nice angle. So we're gonna cut that angle in real quick. And the pattern for this is uh, below the video here. You're gonna need the pattern for this project unless you just wanna make your own pieces you could watch the video and kind of make your own pieces and it wouldn't be too too big a deal but you're you know the pattern is a nice thing so i've just cut out the pattern piece and then i'm just tracing it if you want to use a contact cement or something like that to put it down and do it that way you can i find it just as easy for me just to put it down and trace it out all right so what i'm doing here is i put one on one side and i put one on the other and then all I'm doing right now is I'm marking where that next angle needs to be so that I don't, of course, clip my other piece. So I'm just going to come cut that off. And then we're going to bring in that pattern piece again. Put it on, the, on that angle right there that we just cut. And trace that out. That way we get both those pieces and we just have a tiny, tiny little bit of waste. 
We really try not to waste wood, but it does happen. And on this, you know, if you wind up, you know, you can see I'm kind of like half sketching it through, kind of making sketching out, not really a smooth line, but it's okay because all you got to do is just cut to the inside, you know, to that inside line and you'll be fine. Now I'm doing the same thing here with the phone supports. These are the two that go on the outside that support the phone. So it's a very small piece. Sorry, my fingers are kind of in the way, but I'm just nicely just marking that out and then we'll flip that board around and do another one on the other side. All right, so I cut out the front part of the pattern there. And if you notice, I'm putting it where that angle is going to the back. So that's going to be your front. I'm going to line that up on there. And all the dimensions, everything's there if you want to measure it out. Or you can trace the pattern. So all I'm doing is I'm being real easy with it. I'm just tracing that curve out on the pattern. And then I'm going to come through, hold, make sure I hold that down. I'm going to put a nail right on the crosshairs of where that uh, center that goes. I'm going to give it a little tap. And this is going to give something for the hole saw in a minute to center into. It helps you get your hole closer to where you need it. You still got to be careful, but you want to make sure that it's getting good. All right, so now we're going to line this up on the hole saw. And it's just got a bullet point drill, drill bit in there on this one. And just line it up, make sure it's right in that uh, where that divot for that nail and just roll right on through. That is a one and a three quarter inch hole saw. You could use a flat Forstner bit or a speed bit or something for this if you like. I kind of like using a hole saw because then I have this nice little wheel I can use on something else if I need to. I currently have a pile of those I haven't used, but I have them. Better than just making sawdust, I guess. And just be patient when you're using your hole saw. You can use a hole saw and a hand drill. I don't I don't recommend it. If you hit it wrong, you can really you can tweak your wrist. So we're just gonna get that center back out of there. I think it works better if you kind of tap the outside to get some of the sawdust loose. And you just push that that extra hole right out of there. Let's get the other one cut. So if you've never really used a hole saw or anything like that before, you can get a lot of uh, dust buildup and if there's too much dust that gets built up in there, it can really bind that centerpiece in when you're trying to get it out. So just to make it a little easier, use a very high-tech dust removal there. Blow on it. Lift it up, blow that dust away, and keep rolling. That is my high-tech solution for the day. Just blow on it. All right, so we got the two holes there. Get the, other, get the other center out of there. Save that for another project later on. All right, so we've got our piece here. We're going to take a straight edge, doesn't matter what your straight edge is, and we're going to connect those two holes. You'll see how we're going to do that here in just a minute. We're just connecting those two holes, putting a line between them, and that's just something so, so we have a space for the saw to, uh, to follow here. All right, so I got my square here, and we're going to go one inch from each side. Just one inch from each end, make you a little mark. Then we're going to use the square to just make sure that line goes straight up. This is all about aesthetics right here. If you want to skip this part and leave this part solid, you can. It's not going to hurt anything. You just have to use a jigsaw or coping saw or scroll, or scroll saw to get the middle out. I prefer doing it this way. I think it looks nice and I can use the bandsaw for the whole thing. Bandsaw is always a better, smoother cut. All right, so everything is mapped out and we're just going to come here and follow the lines. I mean, it's just like coloring inside the lines, except for, you know, using a saw blade. Just stay right there on the line, follow the line, and you'll be in good shape. I do like to take the pieces and kind of set them next to each other, match them up, and make sure they look pretty good. Because this is a good chance, a good time if you need to adjust one. Like, you, you know, you missed a line on one a little bit, and you just want to match them up. You can. Saves you from having to cut whole new pieces. All right, so we've got the phone supports here, and we're just going to roll through them. Now the top piece, the bandsaw cannot make that curve. So my personal preference is to cut in from one side as far as I can, cut in from the other side, and then just fix it with a sander later. 
It's just, it works so much better that way for me. But if you'd rather use a scroll saw or a jigsaw or something like that and cut those pieces out, go for it. I find and this is what works best for me, and this is how I recommend to do it because the bandsaw just has a smoother cut. A quick word about bandsaw blades this is a six teeth per inch saw blade, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're cutting hardwood, that's kind of what you need. I do not recommend the really fine ones unless you're doing some really fine wood. If you got some really fine material, really soft wood, you may need some finer teeth blades. But on the bandsaw, it works so much nicer to have a six, eight, four tooth blade, something like that. It gives you a really nice cut still. And again, we're just gonna match these two things up right here. We're gonna make sure they look pretty good and they're pretty close. Nothing we can't fix with sandpaper. I don't think I put that on video, but I just used the, the same pattern there and traced in the arch. And the arch is the same on the top and the bottom. So you don't have to cut the bottom pattern out. Just take the top one, put it up, the pattern for the top, put it up on the wood for the bottom there, trace the arc in. That's all you're doing. It's just a flat piece with an arc. If you want to get fancy with that piece and you want to make something a little bit fancier, you go for it. There's no reason why you can't. All right, so just cutting this arc in and just take your time. Make sure you stay right on the line. Not too big a deal here. All right, so this is what I like, okay? This is why I, I set it up just like this. You come in with the bandsaw, you go straight to that first hole. This is on your, on your mark from the bottom. Move it over, come right down that line, connect those holes, just flip that thing around. Don't tag the outside, the inside of the hole with your bandsaw blade because you'll have to sand that later. Just come through, cut that, move your blade over, just follow those lines, and right on through. It makes it really nice and smooth to do all that. And very little waste, actually. So that's what we're looking for. And you want to double check, you know, before you get too far, that that angle's going in the right direction, that you're working on the top. And you really can't do it too wrong. All right, let's get this thing sanded up and make it all nice and pretty. We're just gonna come through surface sand. If you watch more of my videos, you know I really like the belt sander. I mean, it works really nice for a lot of things. We're just gonna make sure all those, all these surfaces and all the edges are really nice and smooth. Cause this one is not an easy, you can do your finish sanding after it's together, you know, making sure things are relieved, rounded off, things like that. But, um, you want to make sure it's 99% sanded before you get this put together. It's not an easy one to get into to sand something after the fact. And we're just getting this bottom sanded up. The bottom's the easiest part to sand. It's flat. It's straight. Really not a whole lot to say. Just make sure everything's nice and smooth. All your edges. It takes a minute. You know, so I'm using oak and oak is a hardwood so that takes a second or a couple of seconds. Keep your belt clean. That's the belt cleaning stick. Just a little piece of rubber you can find at hardware stores or online, home improvement stores. It's called a belt cleaning stick in most places. It's a little chunk of rubber that cleans the sawdust and debris off your belt. Makes your belt last a lot longer. I do recommend you getting one of those if you have a belt sander. All right, these smaller pieces just make sure you got a good hold on them. If you aren't comfortable doing these on the belt sander, then don't do it. They are smaller pieces. I'm very comfortable with my belt sander. Uh, we're doing this out of a real working shop. This is not a studio in any way. This is a real working production shop. You can use, see I'm using the back wheel to help shape these. And when I designed the shape of that, the shape actually came in where it goes around the wheel of most belt sanders. And it's a really nice way to get them shaped. I'll give you a close up of that here in a minute so you can kind of see uh, what I was doing. Because I don't think it really picked up really well right there. But we're just going to get them sanded nice and smooth. And these are the ones that are really hard to get into once you're 
once your your phone holder is together, they're hard to get to. All of the pieces need to be sanded nice and smooth. As promised, here's a better shot of using the back wheel to shape these. So I'm just using that wheel since it's not a flat surface and these are not flat. So we want to keep that shape. So I'm just using that back wheel. As you can see, just kind of moving it back and forth, going where I need it to, where I need it to go, getting those saw marks off, getting it nice and smooth. Hopefully this closer shot really helps make help you understand what I'm talking about here. But it's real easy on a belt sander to lose the shape of something, so just take it easy, go easy, go slow on it. Take your time and make sure it's the shape and everything that you want. Now what I'm doing here is I've got two of both of them and I just hold them together. You could tape them together, clamp them together if you want, or you don't even have to do this. But I just do that so that they kind of match up a little nicer. Just so I don't, in case I've sanded one a little more than the other, inevitably you're going to sand one more than the other. It's just life. So not a big deal. All right, so this is just a little round uh, set of sandpapers. Uh, they're sanding drums. A lot of people use them on the drill press, and I could have put it on the drill press and used it. And it's actually made more for those stand-up sanders, but if you don't have one, a drill will do everything you need it to do there. And it's getting in those little curves very nicely. And again, you can hand sand this, but um, if you have a drill... In this case, it's a cordless drill, but if you have a drill and you can pick up a set of these drums, they're normally not too bad. You can find them in most most hardware stores, online, that kind of thing. You can find them. They're, they're pretty common. And I think I bought a variety pack that has several different diameters, going from like quarter inch up to an inch. You can get them bigger than that if you like, but anything bigger than that, I start to be able to get my sanders in there, and it's a little nicer. So it's a nice little thing. And and again, sometimes just hand sanding is the best way to get that last little bit and make it the way you want it. I'm smoothing out the inside of these corners because once again, that, that inside is not going to be easy to reach once we get it all together. You can get to it. It's just not easy. And I prefer things to make, make things just a little bit easier. So we're just going to make those all nice and smooth and at this point it's personal preference folks whether you want it really rounded whether you want to leave it on a on a nicer corner however you want it it's not going to affect this build in any way i do recommend at least relieving it a little bit because that does help the wood wear better and you don't get a chance for splinters especially on end grain be sure when you are sanding these that the places where you cut the angle and consult the pattern, you'll know which, which surfaces are going to be glued. The surfaces that are going to be glued, do not sand them. Everything's sanded now and time for final assembly. This is not a hard process. We're going to use some high tech clamps here. We're going to get a roll of painter's tape. You can use regular masking tape if you like or something else, but the tape just works so much nicer there. Just don't do what I just did right there and just literally just yeet that thing right off into the onto the floor. Now I gotta go pick it up when I need it again. Alright, so we're hitting the end grain and we're going to rub some of the glue into the end grain. And the glue is just gonna disappear into that end grain. Oak especially is a very open grained wood. It's hard, but it's open grained. So you gotta rub some glue in there first and then put your glue on to glue it with. And it will give you a much better contact, one, especially since we're talking about end grain. All right, so we're gonna start with one side. We're just gonna line it up. We're just gonna feel for where it lines up with the edge and lines up with the other. And we're just gonna put our tape down now on this one, you gotta pull that that outside out just a little bit. It'll it'll tend to come together or come towards the middle because you know tension, that kind of thing. So you just there's usually about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. You just gotta just push that thing out just a little bit. Make sure the edge meets the edge, 
and tape it down. Okay, so then we're gonna come through with our back supports here. And again, end grain, rub that glue in, the glue gets into the pores, and then when you put the other glue on, it all just kind of binds together and makes a very, very strong connection. So put the glue on, wipe off the excess. I'm using an old sock here. Why not give them another life before they go? There's absolutely no reason to spend money on shop towels, things like that, if you don't need it. So spread the, always spread your glue nice and evenly. And we're gonna set this in just right there on the inside. Now, if you remember, I relieved that inside just a little bit. So I'm coming inside just a little bit to where it's all flat in contact and where it looks good. Now you can move these to the outside if you like. The bottom line is they're there to support. Now if you notice, they're not quite contacting on the top there. We're gonna fix that in just a second, which is with very handy clamp. Here we go, nice long piece of painter's tape. And it looks like I kind of missed the, uh, the frame there a little bit, but you can see I'm putting that right on the top. And all I'm doing is I'm just pulling that down to where the supports meet the back. And we're just gonna tape it just like that. And we're gonna let it sit for a minute. Once your glue sets on that first part, we're gonna come back, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave the back taped up. There's no reason to untape it right now. And all I'm doing is peeling that tape back just a little bit because we're gonna use it again here in a minute. All right, so now we got the phone supports. And we're gonna get the glue on those. We can get that, we're gonna get that glue nice and even. And not a lot of extra glue, it's not necessary. If you get extra glue and you have to come through and wipe it off, then, you know, do what you got to do. But it's all right. I try not to have a lot of extra glue in these things because it can get quite messy. So I take that first one and I'm just lining it up with the bottom. I'm just using my eye, lining up the bottom where it looks good. And then we're going to bring that tape right up and right on up. Now the reason it sits a bit higher like that, so there's room for the charging cord to come under your phone and you can actually leave the phone charging sitting the right way on the charger, on the stand there. All right, so we're putting the second one on and the glue will hold it as intentional, but now we're putting the square up to make sure that they're level because the last thing you want is for your phone to not sit level when you put these on. You know, you got it on a nice level table. Next thing you know, you put your phone on, it's sliding off. Now you want to make sure they're level. So just put that square across, make sure they're good, and let it sit there and set. All right, it has set. I left this one for about 30 minutes. I like to leave these just a few more minutes because there's so many parts that don't get real hard clamps. So I like to make sure the glue is very nice and set before I start on the next part. And we're just going to come through and just every little edge that maybe we haven't got to yet. Cause remember, we haven't done that edge yet. So every edge we haven't got to, we're just going to sand nice and smooth. And again, this is up to you just how rounded or relieved that you want this. It is completely up to you. You can also use a power sander on this. Um, Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. In this instance, I had them all sanded pretty well the way I liked them, so it wasn't too big of a deal. And when it comes to the front there, just make it where it aesthetically pleases you. If you like the look of it, then that's how it should be. If you need to sand those together, you know, sand the where the bottom meets the, the upright there, if you need to sand that nice and smooth together, go for it. Most of the time I do that, sand them nice and smooth together. And there we have it, guys. All set, all done. Trying to give you a good look at it here. I, I really think it has some very nice lines. It looks really nice. There's room for the pop socket. There's plenty of room for the charging cord to come underneath. 
And depending on how you finish this, sometimes I just leave it more natural and just put a natural finish on. Sometimes I put more of a pecan look on them. Uh, you can do just by anything. You can paint them. Whatever you want to do. Like I said, I made this one out of oak. I prefer hardwoods because they're heavier and we're talking about a phone. The last thing you want to do is a phone holder being too light and it not being able to hold your phone. I mean, it'll hold the phone. I'm talking about if you're like knocked over or something like that. Holds the phone beautifully. 